So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 45. If the graph below represents the function f of x, which of the following could represent the equation of the inverse of f? So they've given us a function here, and it looks like a parabola, right? Except it's been kind of cut in half, so if you can imagine there would normally be a vertical axis of symmetry here. The other half of this parabola that isn't here but would be here might look something like that, symmetrical on the other side. Um, the inverse of this function, or in general the inverse of any function, is the mirror image about the line y equals x. So, that's not very good, let's do like that. So let's suppose that's the line y equals x. So that's a line that goes through the origin, so it has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. Um, the inverse of any function is its mirror image about the line y equals x. So if we can imagine taking this vertex point, let's put it over on the other side of the line y equals x. So we'll just literally go straight across it like a perpendicular line and pop it over here. So now it's it's in it's it's on the mirrored side of the line y equals x. And then what would it look like if you took the, this entire parabola graph and mirrored it over there? Instead of being opened up, you have to actually imagine taking this parabola and almost folding it around the y equals x line. What it would end up looking like after that folding would be same shape, still a parabola, but now it would open to the right instead of opening up. Hopefully you see that. If you don't love the graphical representation, we can still do this in yet another way. We might remind ourselves about the way parabolas can be, be graphed. We know that any quadratic formula, any quadratic polynomial is going to be the graph of a parabola. So looking at these answer choices, we see a bunch of parabolas. Just being general, though, for a minute. Normally, we might write a parabola like, and I'm just making this up, has nothing to do with this problem, but suppose we write x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right, that's a parabola. But that's not a convenient way to graph a parabola. If we want to graph it, we'd prefer to have it in some kind of a factored form. So we might write y equals x plus 2 quantity squared. That required us to do some factoring. But it was worth it because what this tells us is that this graph is kind of like the graph of y equals x squared. What It has the same basic shape except for the fact that there's this plus 2 inside the parentheses. What does that plus 2 do? It gives it a horizontal shift. And if there was a number being added or subtracted out here, that would give it a vertical shift but there isn't, so there's no vertical shift. So in general, we can say the formula for a parabola, again, we can write it like this in basic polynomial form, but we'd prefer to have it in some kind of form like this. x minus a quantity squared plus b. If it's in this form, a tells us the horizontal shift, and b tells us the vertical shift. So for example, if we had to take a wild stab at what that original graph was, and I'm totally guessing here, so there's nothing scientific about this, they haven't given us any ticks here on the x and y axis, but let's just take a wild guess. Maybe this is 4 over on the x axis and 3 down. So then this point here might be 4, negative 3, right? That's the vertex of the original graph. If that's the case, what is the vertex of the 
mirror image of the inverse graph. This point would then have to be located at negative 3, comma, 4, because the coordinates interchange when you find the inverse. So that might help us. These equations here are not in our standard form. We like to have things in y equals x minus a quantity squared plus b, so we'll be able to pick off our horizontal and vertical shift. What they've given us instead is x and y interchanged. We instead have x equals y minus a squared plus b. And what happens in this case, we can still use the formula in this form. We don't even have to modify it algebraically, but we do have to revisit our definitions. A now, instead of giving us a horizontal shift the way it normally would, is going to actually give us a vertical shift because it's affecting the y part of the equation instead of the x, so it's going to affect the vertical. And the b that gets tacked on to the end, which would normally be our vertical shift, it's getting added on to x. So this actually gives us a horizontal shift. Horizontal, if I could spell. Um, so the basic takeaway here is that, at least for c, d, and e, if we want to take a closer look at those, we can get a feel for how these differ from a more familiar graph that we know. So this was the basic graph that I sort of expected you to know right off the bat, y equals x squared. Everyone should know how to graph that. That's just a very basic parabola that goes through the origin, right? A comparably basic graph that we can consider is the inverse of y equals x squared, which is x equals y squared. And that, again, same basic idea, parabola, but it opens to the right instead of opening up. The problem is this parabola is not a function, right, because it fails the vertical line test. So if I were to draw a vertical line right here, it would cross the two points. And we know that for a function, for every x, there can only be one y. So when we take the inverse function of a parabola, we can only really take half of it, which is why, in the given problem, they only drew half a parabola, because they knew once it was inverted, the inverse of f wouldn't be a function probably don't need to remember all of that right now for this problem, but it's good background to have, and it's good insight, in case you looked at this curve and didn't even realize that it was half of a parabola, that um, it's helpful to realize that there's another half here, and the reason they didn't show it is because then the inverse wouldn't exist. Um, that aside, we can take this basic idea of x equals y squared being a parabola through the origin that opens to the right, and expand on it a bit. If we begin to add or subtract something to the y part of the equation, that's like our minus a. So if it's minus 4, then that's going to cause a vertical shift upward of 4. It's a little counterintuitive what happens inside the parentheses. If it's minus a number, that's actually an upward shift when it's written in this format, in the horizontal format. If it's minus a number, that's actually a shift to the right in the positive x direction. So you might think minus is left and plus is right, but it's actually the opposite for what happens in here. What happens for the y-intercept part, for the vertical shift, is intuitive. So plus means up and minus means down when it's written in this format or in the um, horizontal format. Positive means to the right and negative means to the left for b. So What's the difference between x equals y squared and, say, choice c? Choice c is shifted four units up and three units to the left. So four units up and three units to the left. So that's probably going to be the best choice. I want to take a look at some of the other choices here to rule them out. Why don't they work? D has a shifting again using the same format so we're starting with the idea of x equals y squared and then we're shifting it so let's draw that a little bigger x equals y squared normally looks like a parabola that opens to the right and then if it's y plus four that is a vertical shift and it's positive so it's actually downward so it's going to take this whole parabola and move it down 
and then minus 3 will move it 3 units to the left. So does this parabola need to move down and to the left to get to its final resting place? No, it needs to move up and to the left. So we don't like D. E is going to have it move down and to the right, which is definitely not what we want. So C is looking better. D and E are out. And the others you can eliminate for other reasons. Like, take B for example. If you were to rearrange this equation you could probably do some completing the square here. It's probably not worth the work, though. Here's a quick, a quick way to check this. If you were to solve this equation for y, you would have to subtract 11 from both sides and, and then take the square root. So then you have y equals x minus 11 square root. And then we know that for numbers in the domain, values of x that might actually count, this would turn out to be a negative number and then y wouldn't be defined. So that doesn't seem right. And then for a, um, how could we eliminate a? I mean, I guess you f once you find one that works, you know you're good. Um, a, we could do some completing the square. We could rewrite this. I'm just going to come down here. A, uh, you could write y, and review completing the square if this doesn't look familiar to you y equals 4, y minus 4 quantity squared, that's going to give us the right middle term, and the last term is going to be plus 16. So we have to subtract 16 to compensate for that, and we're already subtracting 1, so we really have to subtract 17. And now consider what this graph would look like. This graph would be shifted up 4 units, which is good, right? Because the answer choice we like is shifted up 4 units, but then it would be shifted to the left 17 units and that seems like too much because this point is roughly as far away from the x-axis as the y so we expect the shift on x and y to be similar so if, if the vertical is only 4 it doesn't seem like the horizontal would be 17 but A was probably the next closest choice compared to all the others so hopefully and, and this is, again, one last point here in terms of clues when guessing. If you have three answer choices that look similar but are a little bit different, and two oddballs, I'm not saying this is always true, but it's a good idea to take a hard look at the ones that seem similar because those small differences is probably what they're checking to see if you can figure out which difference is the one that makes it work. So if you really had no idea, I'd probably eliminate A and B right away and guess from the remaining three, and hey, you got a one in three shot. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing, or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.